Goport is a town on the south side of Mississippi. Second biggest city uh, in the state of Mississippi. Beautiful city, great people, a lot of seafood. Overall, just amazing place. And, uh, you know, I, I enjoy where I'm from. He loved to go out on that boat and he loved to fish. He never stay still. He always moving or doing something. Fishing, I'm like, any extracurricular activity thing that I do besides like football, it's definitely like meditation. I mean, it's just like a way of escape to get away. I'm a jack of all trades. I do a lot of different things. I golf. That's a good one there. I'm a big bowler. I have like five bowling balls. I build trucks. There's nothing that I feel like I don't do. Look at that, look at that porpoise. See that dolphin? That dolphin like right in shore. It's like right in front of us somewhere. You'll see it come up. Do you see it? You see the fin? Yeah, look, two of them. The beauty of the water. The beauty of the water, I swear. Living in Gulfport is amazing. On any given night here, you can have my family here playing cards and eating a whole bunch of food and just enjoying each other's company. Yeah. <laughs> like that queen of spades you just showed me. Derek growing up in Gulfport has been such a blessing for him. The community is great here and he always says, if you love Gulfport, Gulfport will love you back. And that's definitely the truth. <laughs> That's all right, partner. Good game. He ain't. Ain't run no stuff on the partner. Good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. Derek and I are super duper close. I hate to say it, but I'm a mama's boy. Why do you hate to say it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Like, when you just look at me like big guy, play football. You know, at the senior ball, I asked you a lot, you know, who's your hero? And it's definitely my mother. My mom has sacrificed a lot. She literally would sell the shirt off her back to make sure that, you know, me and my sister had what we need. I was born a uh, preemie uh, four months early. So uh, I was supposed to be born in July. I wasn't, I was born in March. He weighed two pounds, nine ounces. So you could literally hold him in the palm of your hand. This is when he was three weeks old in the hospital. He had a feeding tube and oxygen and different things like that. The doctors told me that if he made it through the night, he would be a vegetable and that he would have no quality of life. I would never walk, I would never talk, I would never, you know, have anything. I mean, she would basically have to take care of me for my entire life. They wanted me to sign a form that says whatever happens after he was born, um, that's what it was. And they just wanted me to allow nature to take its course. I was so concerned of how I was gonna care for a um, child who was going to have issues, uh, medical issues. Um, but one thing about my family is our faith is super strong. And I just trusted that God would um, guide me with the right decision. And so we elected not to sign the form. And sure enough, when Derek was born, he was born dead. When I say born dead, I do mean that he was not breathing on his own and that he did not have any heart rhythm. So he did have to be resuscitated and then put on a ventilator. He was in the hospital for five months. He had to stay in the incubator. They had all these tubes and different things around him. And I was set with him at nighttime, and his papa was set with him in the daytime because one of us had to, just wanted to be there with him. I remember uh, one day I was there, I was talking to him, and he was so tiny. But they had these big hands, real big hands. And I told him, I said, I said, you're going to be something. I said, because you got some big hands. Just talking to him like he was understanding what I'm saying. I said, God got a plan for this kid right here. He was developmentally delayed until he was around six years old because he had bleeding in the brain when he was born. He still had to do those yearly CT scans just to be certain that nothing was going on. So he also developed asthma. I would have pneumonia, wheezing, 
and I would have to go in the hospital for a week, get shots, I'm in there crying, and seeing other kids, being able to run around all day like a normal kid does, I wasn't presented with the opportunity. It was just about still trying to make sure he knew that he could still do whatever he set his mind to in moderation. He started playing flag football at four years old. I'd say, okay, you get to play and you can run really hard for 10 minutes, but you need to sit down for five minutes. My wife was scared to let him play. So she came and asked me, uh, what you think about this? She was so scared. I said, let him play. I was nervous too. I just didn't want to let her know. I was nervous too. But once he got on that field and started playing, um, all that just went away. She knew that was just my way of escape. Like most kids are like, oh, I don't want to go to practice. Like, I was excited to have an opportunity to go and do something other than lay up in the hospital or, you know, get shots or told I had to take a breathing treatment. About the age of eight, nine-ish, I started to have more endurance. I started to have more opportunity to go out and, you know, play a full game. He was just so much bigger than some of the other kids and he was physically aggressive. And the coach is like, okay, he needs to play regular football and put on pads. And I'm like, he is not putting on pads. Like, I don't want nobody to hurt my baby. And he was like, are you paying attention? Like, he's hurting other people's babies. So, like, he needs to put on some pads. So I kept saying, no, he can't be that tough. He can't be that tough, right? And then one night, my sister showed me a tape of him running the ball, and he just completely ran a kid's slap over. He's fast. He could play any position on the field. Like, he would be the quarterback. He could be the wide receiver. He could be running back. Like, he was just really good. He just had a different type of work ethic than I saw in most kids his age at that time. And he just fell in love with the game of football. And he used to write notes that I would find around the house and I kept a few of them, like where will I be in five years and where will I be in 10 years? And he just knew what he wanted to do and he just set his goals to do it and he will not let anything stop him. At the point where I really started figuring out I was good at football was about my eighth grade year. That's where I really started to pick it up and put it down. And I mean, like really put my best foot forward every single day. And if I had to say one significant person in my career it would definitely be Coach Dillard. I first met Derrick when he was a seventh grader at Bellevue Middle School. When you first meet him, you knew then that he could be a, a not only a great football player, but a great kid because he was a hard worker. I mean, he did everything you asked him to do. He was very coachable. He coached me seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade. So I was with him, you know, for basically the beginning stages of my career. <laughs> He was my outside linebacker coach, my defense coordinator, and you know, I kind of started to have that relationship and bond with him to where I'm like, okay, he's pushing me to help me get better. You know, I can really start to lean on him. And, you know, know that he's not doing it to hurt me. He's only trying to help me to get to where he thinks I can be. Derrick was always a leader. Even when he won the scene, his junior year, it don't matter. He's always been a leader. He got along great with his teammates. They, they respected him, he respected them. He led by example. That was one thing that made him steal out. He never missed a workout. He was always here. He was big, he was tall, fast. And I said, this kid's gonna be special. My junior year is where it really clicked for me. And I really started like, I mean, like I said before, I, I, I was dominant, but at this point I was like, yeah. I didn't think he was gonna play defense because his hands are huge. Like, he used to catch passes in school and I'm like, that's my brother. Like, y'all wanna make a touchdown? Hand the ball to Derek, like he's gonna get it done. It's rare that you see a player goes both sides, offense to defense, and Derek did both of those. I just loved him on offense. I think he did great things on offense, but he was just a dog on defense too. Middle linebacker, defensive end. I mean, they put him everywhere. Towards the end of his junior year, you could tell that he was going to be a defensive player and he was going to be really good on defense and everything just started to come together for him. So recruitment was crazy. First school to offer was Ole Miss, like big time. And then obviously the rival from that state, Mississippi State was the second. And then here comes Auburn, Louisville, Florida State. And then I don't, I don't remember the rest of the order after that. It got so crazy where his phone was going off and I had to say like, He's in school. I had never experienced that. It was crazy. <laughs> 10 to 12 schools a day just to see Derek Hall. I'm telling you, it was so many head coaches. We had head coaches sitting down the road waiting for some of the other to leave. And the people in the neighborhood, you know, they'd be like people not the window and this and that, you know. I worked at Chick-fil-A and that was pretty cool seeing all like the different fans come in there, you know, I'm getting off. 
working in the back and they're like, yo, what's up there? Like, come to Ole Miss, come to Mississippi State. And being a 16, 17 year old kid, you're like, hey, this is pretty cool. You know, if, if Ole Miss or Mississippi State wanted a kid from the state of Mississippi, it was hard to be able to pull a kid. But I recruited the Mississippi Gulf Coast because that's where I'm from and had the privilege to, to recruit Derek. And to be honest with you, I felt that it was a long shot. At the time Ole Miss was recruiting him, Matt Luke was the head coach who is a former Gulfport Admiral. People really wanted him to go to Ole Miss. I mean, that was been big, you know, a Gulfport guy going to play for a Gulfport guy. But Derek, main thing, we talked a lot, just go where you feel comfortable at. I feel like he wanted to make the best decision for him and not for anybody else. Like, it's not about what you want, it's not about what they want, it's about what I want. The first time him and his mom came to campus, it was just like a, a natural fit. We knew that Derek was the right fit for us. We just wanted to be able to show him and his mom, Miss Stacy, that Auburn was the right fit for him. We had done a really good job of playing, um, you know, good defense, you know, at Auburn. And we had, had established ourselves as being a good place for D. Lyman to come and develop and master the craft. We had D. Ford, who was a first-round draft pick, Carl Lawson, Montrevis Adams, Derek Brown there, and Marlon Davidson, you know, Nick Cole. So we tried to sell him on the tradition and him being one of the guys to come and continue that tradition. Derek was so used to everyone saying how amazing he was and, you know, what a great player because when you go on those recruitment visits, that's generally what they tell you because they wanted you, they want you to come through their school. Derek, sophomore and junior film, was really, really good. But to be transparent, his senior film was just okay. You know, you can kind of see him out there somewhat playing not to get hurt. I went and watched him play uh, you know, one Friday and, and and I didn't think Derek played very hard. So I was disappointed in it. When he came up on his visit, you know, I'd made a cut up of that game. And, uh, you know, had him in my office, had his mom, had his grandparents in there. He was like, What's this? And like, I put my head down. He was like, you suck. You never played Auburn. You're not good enough. Like, if you keep this up, I'm gonna take my offer from you. Like, he was just, I'm talking about putting it to me. And that lit a fire under Derek's butt. And when I say that next Friday night, that young man had the game of his life. And Coach Garner called him and said, now this is the type of man I want at Auburn. To me, that was, you know, something pretty significant that he took the time to be able to try to help me get better at what I do. And I haven't even signed on dotted line. I haven't committed to you. Uh, you know, I haven't done any of that. So for him to do that, you know, that really stood out to me. He just was so overwhelmed with the things that Auburn offered. What is it about Auburn? What's kind of appealed to you most about Auburn? Well, love. I mean, every time I go there, it feels like a family. Same thing with Mississippi State. It's definitely narrowing it down. It's, it's getting close to a time to wrap this thing up. How long is that list right now? Uh, three. Three? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us who those three are? Uh, Florida State, Auburn, and Mississippi State. It was crazy because people used to ask me, hey, who's your brother going to pick? Who's your brother going to go with? And I'm like, I don't even know. He hasn't told me. They was like, oh, it's okay if you want to keep it a secret. I'm like, no, Derek has not told us anything. I never committed anywhere, so that was really, I mean, like the day before, I was tussling, I was fighting, I was, couldn't sleep. Asking my mom, you know, mom, where should I go? She not swimming in one direction or another. I was like, I want to go to Auburn, but I want to go to Mississippi State. But I want to go to Auburn, but I want to go to Mississippi State. But I really want to go to Auburn. And I slept on it that night. I prayed about it. I woke up the next morning, and Auburn it was. As the Admirals blitz their way to a second straight Region 4 6A championship, senior linebacker Derek Hall focused all his attention on the team, giving little indication on which way he was leaning for his collegiate destination. Well, at a ceremony surrounded by friends and family this morning, the four-star prospect put the speculation to rest, signing with the Auburn Tigers. He went there with his hat in his bag. He knew where he was going. He only had that Auburn hat. I had my teammates, my coaches, all my faculty and staff from high school, my family. And, you know, I felt like that was kind of everybody at that time that really influenced, uh, you know, my life and had a positive impact on what I did. So do the routine that everybody thanks God, their family and stuff like that, put the hat on and the rest is history. I'd like to announce that I'll be attending Auburn University. It was an unbelievable feeling when he picked up that Auburn hat and said that he wanted to be a Auburn Tiger, and it was a celebration in the recruiting room for us as a staff. It was a big deal, you know, to get Derek Hall out of Mississippi, you know, that was a major coup. 
for him to choose to come to Auburn and to let us be a part, you know, his matriculation and his growth, you know, that was just an honor. Derrick told me, he said, you know what, Granny? He said, I, I love Auburn. I just feel good when I'm there. Derrick had to do what was best for Derrick and what he feel that he would grow and prosper more. That's where he had to go. At All In Credit Union, you can score big with our fixed rate credit card. Our first team meeting before, you know, you start classes on that Monday, that was frightening for me. Being in a new place, a new environment, new people. You got like Derrick Brown, Marlon Davidson, like Smoke, Daniel Thomas, Jamie and Sherwood. I mean, you got like all these dudes that like, you watched them play on TV not even a year ago, and now you're sitting in the same room with them. I'm talking about they big, humongous, like, you like, dang, how am I gonna hold up to this? 